yeah, they're, they look really good. There's a lot of, a lot of pods, a lot of clumps of pods, which yeah. it's always hard to, I guess, actually get a feel for where they're at. But when you see Depending clumps. Depending where the nodes are on them. And yeah. You know, when you know. see clumps like that, you know that they're going to be some good beans. Well, the other thing is too, when you get done with this, we'll get those uh, harvest maps, those yield maps done up and sent back to you. And then we can obviously use that to tailor the fertilizer recommendations going into next year. Yeah. So. Yeah. So people help solve the problems, technology and innovation are outputs of, of really good people coming up with solutions. If the innovation stops, we all stop. Our people come in every day ready to make that difference. Over the next 10 years, the world is predicted to be at 10 billion people. We are gonna have to feed those people on less acres and less resources. I often say the impossible just takes longer. We make time to innovate those impossible tasks. We don't believe there's anyone in the industry that's got a better portfolio than we do. Innovation. It's what we do. It's everything that we do here. Here at Star Rock Farms, we farm row crops. We have dairy cows. We have a swine facility. We have beef cattle. Our farm is, is a diversified uh, operation. We have crops. Uh, we grow corn, wheat, and soybeans, and dry hay. We have also recently expanded into Virginia, and we are now doing uh, grazing cattle, uh, cropping down there. I love running equipment. That's what made me fall in love with farming. Um, running combine right now is probably my favorite thing to do. But aside from that, I work on the fertility and agronomy and crop scouting side of the business. So I do a bunch of the crop planning, crop scouting, fertility recommendations, the soils, managing the soil samples. I personally work on the cropping entity most of the time, um, whether it be in the field or in the office, doing agronomic planning, budgeting, um, cost production, marketing. That type of thing. There's actually seven of us here uh, who works for the family business. Uh, there's myself and my dad. Uh, my dad also works on the cropping side of the business. He's he's probably the one of the main reasons why I fell in love with farming is because I grew up going to work with him and enjoyed enjoyed what he did and always had fun. I feel that it's very important to keep generational farms going. They've been a part of the community for. Uh, for generations and having that generational transfer and having that generational relationship within the community um, shows the commitment to uh, the family being involved in agriculture, you know, in this part of the world. We separate ourselves or try to separate ourselves by uh, not being okay with just doing the same old thing that we've done 10 years ago, 20 years ago, even last year. There's one thing the same about farming, it's that every year is different. I feel like we do a really good job at questioning ourselves to make sure that we're always putting our best foot forward, trying to do what's right. The biggest thing that we had to overcome in this area is uh, making the transition from conventional till to no till. We are in the Chesapeake Bay watershed and it is very important to um, this area, this community, this part of the world. There was a learning curve to be able to do that and now we feel that it is a very, very good practice that we adopt 100% uh, with cover crops and other things. Being progressive but also not, not getting too far down that line that we're also forgetting the basics keep us relevant in this ever-changing world with consumers and the ag markets. Farming's a volatile environment, things are always changing. and We're price takers in pretty much every sense, so um, volatile crop markets, I mean, crop prices are down, fertilizer prices are up, we can't control the weather. Especially over the last five, six years has just been, for one, the volatility of the fertilizer markets and just the ag markets in general. The farming community, they need resources and options uh, to continue to, uh, you know, have a sustainable future, and we can provide that with, um, you know, the resources we're bringing to the table. 
every person on our team um, is bought into our goal and is doing all they can do to make sure that we are taking care of our customers and getting the job done. My relationship with Helena has been wonderful thus far. A lot of times things change here on the farm and when those changes happen, Helen is willing to jump through whatever hoops necessary to make sure we have what we need to get the job done. Bringing to the table the best that they have to offer from the information that they gather, providing us transparency with the information that they have. When we need them, when we need something and we need it now, they can get it here because in this business, timing is everything. Timing can be the difference between 200 bushels and 250 bushels. Starhawk relies a lot on the data to make decisions. A lot of these family-run operations, they need to watch every penny, focus on the return on investment, and that's what we really try to help them do with agri-intelligence. People are always a little hesitant with changing a system. We did all of our soil sampling in-house. We switched gears and tested out their high ground program. We're not just pulling soil samples for them. Uh, we pull the soil samples after we map the fields. Um, we do our smart sampling. We get the results back from the soil samples. But then what we do is we integrate their yield data. And that's really for them where the rubber meets the road because we can tailor their yield goals across the fields. It adjusts it per the different zones. You're good yielding zones, your poor yielding zones, and it ties that into a nitrogen recommendation with um, the soil information. That uh, agri-intelligence piece that Helena has been able to offer to us has really helped us take us to the next level. Soil health is something that, that Helen has always placed a premium on and we believe it's very important. Part of that is balancing the nutrients that you have in your soil. So um, if, if we take a soil test, we can help better determine what ratio, what mix of nutrients we actually need. We really believe in the technology of, of agri-intelligence and what it can provide. Interpreting that data and helping our customers make the best decision is, is the most important part. Helena is on the cutting edge of, of everything that they do. Helping us to produce better results with our cropping, environmental stewardship, Every year we collect hundreds of thousands of soil tissue data. Um, we also collect tens of thousands of plant tissue data. Um, so that data we aggregate and we can help um, better determine by geography what nutrients are the biggest uh, players in a particular area. The innovation that has led to success in Star Rock is basically staying ahead of the ball game, adapting and using technologies like agri-intelligence to be able to look and see where to place fertilizers and be more efficient with their operation. They've brought products to the table like inertia, uh, like hydrohume, and just different ways of thinking about, you know, how can we how can we put products out there that the crop will be able to use immediately, stir up the microorganisms in the soil to help that those roots get the nutrients they need. And it's, it's really allowed them to focus on where their investment on their fertilizer needs to go. They're putting it where it needs to be and making sure those crops are the most efficient that they can be during the year. Looking at the agri-intelligence printouts, having Helena run reports for us, whether it's farm specific, region specific, we can kind of track trends in fertilizer and use that data to tie into our logistics piece of maybe we need to add some more sulfur over here, or some boron over here, or everything needs this, and try to tie that data in together to, to fine tune the acre. So it started with soil samples on a small scale and kind of grew over the last few years to where it's now an all-encompassing program where we have soil sampling, crop scouting, tissue samples. Uh, we dive a lot and spend a lot of time into analyzing yield data and utilizing that for the fertility recommendations. Probably our most frequently asked question to them is what should we be doing better? What products should we be putting out? Um, where do you see our weaknesses from a cropping program standpoint and agronomic standpoint? They're utilizing kind of the whole portfolio. So, you know, things like humix, uh, things like nutritional products. Uh, humic acids are uh, organic acids that uh, help complex uh, nutrients applied uh, with the humic acid and also already in the soil. And using humic acids helps with things like 
with nitrogen, with leaching. Um, it helps with volatility. Uh, another big part is uh, nutrient interaction, you know, of, of helping to release nutrients that are bound up in the soil and how do you protect those nutrients to keep them available? And, and that's where, where Humix come in. Uh, we have, you know, different forms that we offer at Helena. We have a uh, dry form, uh, which is Resurge. It's designed to go in with your, your dry fertilizer blends. Resurge um, is a product we've been using here for the last couple of years. Just trying to find ways to maximize that investment when it comes to breaking down the nutrients, you know, in manure and things like that to help those acres um, when it comes to you know phosphorus and potassium. When humic acids are applied with phosphorus, uh, the phosphorus will actually bind to the humic acid, uh, which keeps the phosphorus in a more plant available form, uh, which increases your uh, phosphorus use efficiency and ultimately your grower profitability. You're seeing fertilizer prices go through the roof, right? And the cost of products are going up. So whenever you see that, you wanna do the best that you can to protect that investment. Because we know Ultimately, the most expensive application that a grower makes is one that doesn't work. My dad coins the phrase, if you're not changing your mind, you don't have one. Why, why were we ever blanketing 300 pounds of nitrogen on a field? If it's not working, then you tweak it um, to try to make it work. If it's not gonna work, then you circle back and start something over. But, you know, make, make a decision and then make another decision. Um, I had the opportunity to watch Ellie in the combine last night. Have you, when, when she was a, a little girl, did you ever expect her to be running the farm and doing what she's doing today? <laughs> you got me though. <laughs> oh boy. Oh man. Now, I never, never thought that Ellie would, um, would be wanting to do what she's doing now. She always had interest in it, but I never thought that she would be at the level that she is at right now with the abilities that she has and the maturity that she has for a 27-year-old. I think the future is bright, and I also feel very good about the support we have from retailers like Helena to uh, make sure that we're doing what we need to be doing as a producer. <laughs> oh my. This is the best part. <laughs> Innovations mean a lot of different things in agriculture. We're at the forefront on technology. We're bringing, you know, new products uh, that are really driven by what's needed in the market. We're here to make sure that people can use them correctly and get the full value out of them. Well, innovation is very important to us. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. You're never sitting still. If you have blazed a new path and really invented something that has never existed before, that is innovation. It's just continually striving to be better. Be able to go out and execute that is one of the biggest things that I feel that we do. Thinking outside of the box and not being afraid to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone for what's best.